Today, we're gonna go through 10 different gimbal moves and I'm gonna break down each one into everything that you need to know to be able to create these moves and to be able to get really awesome looking footage. Guys, if you're new here to this channel, my name is Jevin Dovey. I do a lot of filmmaking tutorials. I'll do some YouTube training, and I also just do adventure films and vlogs on this channel. All right, so let's go through the 10 gimbal moves that are really going to give you some awesome footage. Number one, and this is the push in and push out. Now to do this, you wanna put it in the lock mode, and you're gonna to wanna to use a 16 millimeter to 24 millimeter lens. You wanna use a wider lens for this shot. And to do this shot, you're going to walk forward or walk back. So set your subject where you want them to start and plan out where you're going to have them end. And basically that's going to create a dramatic move, pushing in and pulling out from the subject. Now the gimbal that I'm using is the Zhiyun Crane 3 Lab. This is the gimbal that I've been using for a little while now, and I actually really like this gimbal because of its design and how smooth the footage is that I'm getting out of this gimbal. Okay, so shot number two is a dolly left and right. This is the same principle as the push in, push out. Walk from your left to your right or your right to your left and these first two moves mimic moves that you can do on like a slider or a dolly. And you wanna be very smooth with these motions so that you get that really cinematic look. Now in terms of the lens for the dolly left or right, you could use any focal length going from super wide to super punched in. Now a good twist on this move is basically lock your focus on the subject and then walk behind an object. Now when you walk out from behind that object, you're going to reveal the scene in front of you. And this is great when you're doing transitions. You can go from a scene and then transition past an object and then come out of an object in another scene and you have an instant transition. If you wanna see more transition ideas, I'll put a link down below in the description to another video that talks about transitions and you can use these gimbal moves to enhance these kind of transitions. Okay, so the next one is a wide spin or an orbit. To do this move, you need to have it in the tilt lock mode, and you're gonna wanna use a wider lens, so a 16 to a 24. Now the key is keeping your distance from the subject and walking in a circle around the subject. And you, what you wanna do is continually point the camera at the subject in the center. So you're going to orbit around the person or object that you're filming. So shot number four is another version of this spin, however, you're gonna be using a much longer lens. So this is the parallax spin. You're gonna to wanna to have it in the tilt lock mode, and then you're gonna be using a longer lens, so think 35 to 50 millimeter lens. You're gonna to wanna to lock in your focus on the subject. Now keep your distance from the subject and walk in a circle around the subject. What's different between this and the wider version of this is that you're creating parallax, and parallax is when the background is moving faster than the foreground, so you get this really kind of cool look out of your footage. And this is something that you'll see in a lot of Hollywood cinema. They'll do dramatic spins around a character and that parallax is what makes it more dramatic. So longer lenses and spin around the subject. All right, so number five is kind of like the push-pull, but you're gonna follow a subject. So something has to be in motion. So you can use a longer lens for this, or you could use a wider lens, but you're gonna wanna keep it in the tilt lock mode rather than the full lock mode for this mode. And the idea is that you're following a subject. Now a subject can move in different directions. So that's why I like to use the tilt lock for this so I can follow them and follow whatever motion that's going on. And you can either follow in front of them or behind them, but the idea is you wanna keep the same distance from them throughout the entire shot and you're following them. Now, like I said, you could use a longer lens, but you have to be more careful with the focus on this. It creates some cool dramatic results. However, you really have to stay that exact distance from the subject. And if they're coming at you, that means you're running backwards. And if you're following them, that means you have to chase them at the same pace that they're running. Number six is a low angle shot. And so you can do a lot of these different moves, but from a low angle. Try to change your angles when you're working with a gimbal. So when you you get down low and point up, you have that super dramatic low shot. And the beauty of the Crane 3 Lab is you have this handle on top that allow you to get these super low shots very easily. And this is one reason why I like this gimbal so much is that it's easy to maneuver from your different positions because of the way that the handle is set up on this gimbal. So with the low shot, you could basically recreate any of the moves that we've talked about, but just bring the camera super low and point up at your subject. Now you could either focus on a portion 
portion of your subject or you can widen out and have the entire subject in the frame. It's just a different perspective and gives you a whole different look to your footage. Now number seven is a reveal. So you're gonna wanna use the follow mode. And what we're gonna do is go from the sky and pan down into your subject and follow them. So whether the person is stationary or moving, you can use this follow mode, start looking at the sky, and then slowly tilt down on the gimbal to reveal your subject in the frame. Now with any of these moves, when you're doing a reveal or a dramatic move like this, just make sure that you feather in on both sides so you have no jolty motion. The whole idea behind a gimbal is smooth, dreamy-like footage. So you're going to want to feather as much as possible when you're doing these kind of shots. So start in the sky and then pan down to find your subject. And you can do the same looking down at the ground and panning up or panning from an object left to right. Basically, it's a reveal where you're looking at something else and then panning onto your subject. Number eight is another sort of reveal, but you're basically gonna be starting on someone's feet and then moving up to their head. So it's a kind of person reveal or an object reveal where you start on one aspect of it and move up to another. To do this, you're gonna to wanna to have it on tilt lock and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that if you're using a longer lens, you just lock that focus in and then make the move from bottom to top. And what you're gonna do is just move your hands from down low to up high to be able to get this kind of a shot. Now the next one is a fun one and this is a jib shot. So jibs are big pieces of equipment that allows a camera to get these sweeping shots from way high to way low. Now with a gimbal, you can attach a monopod and then you can get a much higher sweeping motion. So a couple notes when you're working with a jib-like shot, I suggest using a wider lens because you'll be able to see more of the motion in the actual frame. And then also you're gonna wanna put it on the tilt lock mode. So either start high and come down onto your subject or start down low and then sweep up high to reveal the bigger scene that's going on. Now the last shot is a POV whip. And basically what happens is the camera follows you super fast. So it's the follow mode, but it has a quick reaction time when you're actually using this mode. So the purpose of this is basically you can have your gimbal getting smooth footage, whatever motion that you want, but then when you wanna do a transition to another scene or another shot, you can whip. And when you put these together and you add a a little motion blur on the top of this, it creates a seamless transition from one scene to the next. All right guys, let me know your thoughts on these 10 different moves. Go out there, play around with each one of them, and let me know down in the comments which ones you like the most. All right guys, I'll see you on the next one.